And now, lend us your ears for an update from Nebraska Corn. On this week's report, we are going to get a summary from Corn Congress, which was held virtually last week. Here to tell us about it, Brandon Honeycutt. He is a producer from Giltner, Nebraska, vice president of the Nebraska Corn Board. He was also re-elected to another term on the National Corn Growers Association Corn Board. Give us a, a kind of a report on the major areas of discussion. What were some of the things that the delegates talked about? You know, yeah, we did go virtual last week, which made it a little bit interesting. You obviously missed the face-to-face, and with any technology, there were a few hiccups here and there, but overall things went well. You know, resolution-wise, was was really good because we didn't have anything really contentious. Some of it was dealing, you know, we got different things on sustainability. We have always resolutions trying to figure out how to deal with, like, the growing pile of corn. And so there was a resolution that came about that that, you know, people really weren't in favor of, like a, a, like a voluntary set-aside acres or something. And uh, we always appreciate people coming with those ideas because at least get us to think, even if they get voted down. Just like every time we have this, there's some of them that you think should breeze through pretty easily, and there's some that cause a lot of discussion, and we got through it. So now that Corn Congress has taken place, what do you see happening from here on out? What's what's going to be the direction, the priorities for the National Corn Growers Association? You know, as we're looking through, we'll just say till the end of the year for right now, we're going to be dealing with the same issues that we've, we've been currently dealing with. You know, we've got ethanol issues, growing pile of corn, and how, how do we deal with that trade issues? You know, we've got, looks like the phase one with China's starting to work hopefully well and got some momentum there on some trade issues. There's things we've been working on with high octane, low carbon as far as ethanol that probably, I'm going to say put on hold, but you know, there's an election coming up so that a lot of things going to, all the air is going to be sucked out of the room by, by the election and we're still dealing with the Ninth Circuit with a ruling on dicamba and, and we'll see where that, that heads. So that's going to take a lot of, lot of efforts as well. So we've got all these things dealing from the production side all the way to the trade side that protect the corn growers' interest to, can, to use the crop protection products they have all the way to making sure that we can get the price of corn moving in the right direction. How about for you and your involvement in the corn board? What's on tap for your action team and field to market and things like that? You know, yeah, so the action team that I get to represent, we deal with technology, and so we're dealing with everything from pollinator habitats to the drones to crop protection products. We kind of have this whole wide-ranging gamut of things going on. So we have, even on field-to-market, dealing with sustainability stuff and ag innovation agenda that both corn and, and field-to-market and others are working on, and, and hopefully down the road trying to work through on whatever climate legislation we see and try to figure out how to develop like a carbon market that works well for farmers to help the producers bottom line by just doing what we do on a daily basis, which is producing a high quality crop and being as sustainable as possible. All right, sounds great. Once again, congratulations to your re-election to the National Corn Growers Association Board of Directors, Brandon Honeycutt from Giltner, Nebraska, Vice President of the Nebraska Corn Board. Chad Moyer reporting. This message was brought to you by Nebraska Corn. Enhancing demand, adding value, and ensuring sustainability. Learn more at NebraskaCorn.com.